Come on, anybody love Jesus in this place tonight? Oh my goodness. It is uh, so great to be with everybody right here at Grant's Mill. Come on, Grant's Mill, make some noise for me. Where are you guys at tonight? Awesome. It, uh, it is such an honor for us and for all of our church now to join together. One church, many locations. So glad to have every one of you campuses joining us. Anyone who may be joining us online or anyone on demand. Let's put our hands together one time for our entire church family. We love you. We love you. We love you. And I'm just so fired up to be in church tonight. And I just, I'm just thinking, I was telling Pastor Blake right before I came out, just, I mean, how, how amazing is it that God chose us to be a part of this? And I know, I know there's a lot of bad news in the world, but can I give some good news? God is moving at Church of the Highlands right now. Well, God's moving down in Mobile and Auburn and Opelika and Montgomery and Columbus and Noonan and all across the Birmingham area. I said, God is moving. God's moving in Gadsden. God is moving in Tuscaloosa. Even in Tuscaloosa, God is moving. We love you, Tuscaloosa, Pastor Bubba. God is moving up in North Alabama in the Shoals. In fact, back in August, I, I got a, uh, just a good report of a student who came. She came to Motion Night in August. She was lost, didn't know God. She met Jesus, and then she got connected with a bunch of new friends who led her to a freedom group, and she jumped all in, and God is radically changing her life right now. Come on, put your hands together for thousands of stories just like that. And even over in Huntsville right now, we're launching a new campus. We're actually building a new campus, and we launched, I don't know if you've heard this, but we launched uh, just a few months before the building is finished at, at the AMC Movie Theater in Huntsville. It's our first time ever being in a movie theater for church. And God is using that campus in this season to reach a lot of people, but even the team at that movie theater is experiencing God in a huge way. I said, God is moving at Church of the Highlands. It's amazing. And even at Highlands College, just I, so grateful. We just went through just a moment as we worship God with our giving. You know, what you give is also an investment in Highlands College. And there are so many stories. We have 176 freshmen right now who've come here from all over 37 different states to Birmingham to pursue a call of God in their life. And your generosity made a way. And I'll tell you the story of one of them. We have a young girl who at eight years old was sexually abused in the home she grew up in. She ended up being trafficked at 10 years old. Her grandmother came, praise God, for a godly grandmother who came and found her, rescued her, connected her with a local church because she gave her heart to Jesus who healed her. And now she's studying ministry so she can go and serve others who are in similar situations. God is moving. And I'm, I'm just honored to be here with you tonight. I love First Wednesday. First Wednesday's a little more relaxed. First Wednesday's like family night. Do y'all enjoy the two minute mingle? I know, I know it's just so fun seeing everybody hang out. You know, First Wednesday's kind of an old school Bible study and that's exactly what we're gonna do tonight. And I believe God's moving in our church. I believe God is gonna move tonight in a special way. I could hardly sleep last night. So excited for us to open up God's word together because every time we do, when we open his word, we experience God. We learn together, we grow together, and then we get to go live it out together to change the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. And so tonight, I'm believing for that. I have faith for tonight. If you have your Bible, open up to Colossians chapter one. Uh, we're gonna jump into God's word uh, here tonight. And I just uh, have fallen in love uh, with this book, uh, the book of Colossians. It's, it's uh, four chapters long. It's 2,000 words, roughly 95 verses in, the, in those four chapters. It's not a long book, but it is power packed. And if you want to summarize, if you've never studied it, a great way to think about contextually for the, the book of Colossians is it's a recentering book. Come on, look at somebody and say recentering. Re I, don't, I don't know if you've heard that word. It's kind of on trend right now. That word is really usually connected to things like emotional health or emotional intelligence. But recentering is this idea that when we kind of get off, you know, and, and a lot of times people describe it this way, kind of off in the mental abyss or, you know, in, in Alabama, we say the boondocks. When you get your, when your mind and your thoughts get start straying away and you end up in the mental boondocks, recentering is the ability to come back to center, to come back to a foundation. Um, if you have, um, a, you know, a maps app on your phone, Google maps or Apple maps uh, on your phone, uh, there's usually a button, you know, you might scroll the map and you might zoom out and you might scroll to other states or other parts of the world, but there's usually a button like at the top right hand corner, it looks like a, an arrow, right? And what happens? You push that button and what does it do? It zooms you back, it re-centers you back. I'm here to tell you tonight that God's word and, and it's spe uh, specifically the book of Colossians is a re-centering book. It brings us back to a solid foundation, which is very important because y'all, I know I may be bringing you brand, this may be the first time you ever heard this, but we are living in a crazy chaotic world. <laughs> 
And it's one thing emotionally, we can talk about emotional intelligence and emotional health. We should talk about those things. Those things are important. But I think more than anything, any time in history right now in this moment, we need to be sure that we're recentered, not just emotionally, but spiritually. That we have the ability to live in the chaos of this world and the confusion of this world and to find our way, not just back home, but to live centered on the word of God. And Colossians is gonna do exactly for that tonight. And I believe in, in for us, the rest of our lives as we read it, it becomes a tool to recenter us. And the reason I believe it's so specifically powerful for this is that it's written, the book of Colossians, to a group of people who honestly were facing a lot of the same kind of uh, cultural climate situations. The winds of culture were blowing in a lot of the same ways. So I put it on the screen. You, if, you're, if you're taking notes in your app, you can look at it. But there were a lot of things happening and Paul addresses these all, all in Colossians. We, they were dealing with... Um, a lot of different kinds of philosophy, all these different kinds of thought that were coming their way. These, the newest, greatest idea. They were dealing with what Paul calls elemental uh, forces or, or nature. The, some people were worshiping nature in that region of, of what is now modern day Turkey in the city of Colossae. There were others who were super legalistic, kind of coming out of the Jewish camp, and they were all about this kind of a, you know, live a certain way, and if you don't live this way, if you don't earn your salvation, you'll never have your salvation. There was all this confusion in the air. There was this thing called Gnosticism, which is honestly a really fun word to say. Come on, look at somebody and say Gnosticism. That's just a really, any word that starts with a G but sounds like an N, it's just an awesome word, right? But this was this idea, which honestly is very alive today. It was like the original heresy, and it's very alive today, which is basically like build your own faith. Uh, a little of that, a little of that, and, and then ultimately to feed your flesh if it feels good, do it. And so just as a, a way to illustrate this, honestly, the same thing the Colossians were facing is, is a lot of what we're facing. We start out with this really, really pure faith, but then there's like a little of this comes in, come on somebody, and there's a little of this thought, and we turn on the TV and we see a little of this, and we read this latest self-help book, and there's a little of this, and what was at one point this beautiful, pure faith has now drifted away and turned into a cocktail of a lot of things. Now, I know we're in church. We don't know anything about a cocktail. <laughs> I'm talking about a fruit cocktail. You know what a fruit cocktail? Remember fruit, y'all remember fruit? Come on, who grew up in the 80s and 90s? Fruit. My parents were like, we gotta eat healthy. Fruit cocktail. <laughs> There's more sugar in a fruit cocktail than there is in a Mountain Dew. It's like, you know, it's in week. But I, uh, in a lot of ways, the reason this book's important, I want us to lean in tonight as we study God's word because we're living in a, this book is, we can apply it directly to the world we're living in. And we gotta be so careful as the people of God that what starts out so pure doesn't end up muddled and murky and confused. And so God's word recenters us. So if you've got your Bible again, open up Colossians chapter one. This is a text that is gonna help us find our way home. Maybe you're here tonight and your faith was pure and it has drifted. Let God's word be a light and a lamp to you tonight. I guarantee if it's not you tonight, it may be at some point, but I guarantee we all know at least one person right now who is struggling in the world we're living in. They are confused, disillusioned. I have a list of people who at one point in their life loved God and loved his church and now they, for whatever reason, hurt, offense, confusion, thought, they have drifted away and I am praying fervently for them that their life can be recentered. We wanna lean in tonight because we can use everything God wants to show us tonight uh, from his word. Colossians 1 starting in verse 15. This is our, so back to the context of the home button on the map, this is our home button. These three verses are so powerful, these four verses. It says, the sun is the image of the invisible God. I said the sun is the, invisible, is the image of the invisible God. I'm talking about Jesus tonight, the firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Can I get an amen in church tonight? <laughs> he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead. And here it is, everybody. So that in everything, Jesus Christ might have supremacy. Our home button, our beacon, our lighthouse, in the confusion and chaos of our life, in the confusion and chaos of, our, of the pain that we're going through, in the situations that we will face today, tomorrow, and in the future, our lighthouse is the person and the work of Jesus Christ. He is the center, he is the foundation, he is what this whole thing is built on. It's not built on Church of the Highlands or our small group or whatever else you might want, my, my name or your name. It is built on Jesus today, tomorrow, and forever. He is the center of it all. And if we ever lose that center, we begin to drift away. And when we drift away, our faith can end up so confused, so fast. And tonight God is saying, if you wanna come home, you can look to him. 
I love what it says in chapter 13. If we're going to live in this world, we got to let these, or chapter three, we got to let these verses sink so deeply into our heart. Verses one and two says, since then, since then you have been raised with Christ. This is very specifically here talking to believers. It's, it's the first two chapters, go read them, and it's saying, because all that supremacy, because all these things are true, because you were dead and lost and in your transgressions and sin, because all that is true, since then you have been raised with Christ. And here it is, our prescription in the chaos of our world, set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God and set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. If you've got your Bible or if you're taking notes, underline that first that word set right there. And that word is like in the original language, it's an aggressive word. It can be translated to seek, to pursue, to chase, to seize, to hold on to, to dig into, to taste, to savor, and to treasure. Come on, somebody. God's word is communicating to us. This is not a casual situation. This is not a casual pursuit of Jesus. Paul is saying, and God is saying through Paul, with everything you have, like lean in with all of your might, all of your strength, set what? Set your hearts and your minds. What you think and what you feel, what we believe, set those things, not on the earth, where it can be so confusion, confusing, but set those things on things above. And when we do, Jesus, our true north, can break through any confusion, any chaos. And y'all, this is chemistry lesson 101 right here, but I want it to be a powerful reminder. When we come back to our home of Jesus, no matter what muddled or murk there was, it can turn back pure at any moment. And that's the truth of the word of God. So if we came in here looking like this tonight, we can leave looking like this. And I'm believing the same thing for any, any of your friends, any of your family, any of my friends, any of my family that have drifted away. The word of God is real. Hey, everybody, it is powerful. So you gotta, if you got your notes again tonight, write down this title. We're gonna talk about tonight on things above. On things above. Let's pray. God, thank you tonight for your word and the power of your word, which is perfect in timing for this moment. God, thank you for a now word from the Holy Scripture tonight. And God, we just open our hearts and our minds. And God, we do exactly what your word says. We take them off the things below and we put them on the things above. And God, we're trusting that as we do, you will clear up any confusion, any hurt, any heartache, any distance between us and you will be broken off of our lives tonight. And God, in advance, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said... So I think it's, it's obvious for us, like living as a Christian, I've been a Christian now for, for a little over 20 years. I don't know how long you've been pursuing Jesus. For any of us who've been raised to life with Christ, it really can seem like, like living this thing out on planet earth is like a little bit of a spiritual tug of war. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like the things below and the things above. It's like we know Jesus and we love Jesus and we have committed our life to Jesus, but we also love ourselves and we love our way and we love our stuff. Come on, anybody out there? And we love our comfort. And it can feel like this, this tug of war. Uh, a few years back, um, I was down in Orlando for a few days and you would expect being in Orlando, I was gonna do something fun, right? You know, there's several theme parks, y'all may have heard of them, Disney and you know, uh, everyone's favorite, you know, Legoland or, or Universal or uh, you know, SeaWorld. So I was not though in Orlando for any of that. I was in Orlando, believe it or not, for an incredible event called an accreditation conference. <laughs> now, you, you've never been to a party until you've been to an accreditation party. That's where colleges from all over the country come together and for three days, y'all, there's nothing but pocket protectors and lukewarm coffee and Dell computers and muffins and all these amazing things and all these really big words. That's literally like the entire time I'm there, I'm like, everyone's talking so intelligently and I'm just there, especially early on when we started Highlands College. The first year I went, I was like 35 years old. I literally think everyone there thought I was an, like an intern. Like this, this is a true story. Someone was asking me for directions around like this guy who I'm assuming was like another college president looked at me and was like, yep, intern. And he was like, hey, can you help me you know, find whatever? And I was like, I just pointed in that direction. Praise God, hope, hope you found it, you know? And, and anyway, so, so we're, we're there, we were there for a few days and just having the best time ever. And Jill went to support me, you know, she's, I'm at accreditation. Y'all know I love the vision of Highlands College. I tell Pastor Chris every year, 21 days of fasting is easy compared to those three days of accreditation. Um, but anyway, we, Jill was there with me. We actually took one of our kids as punishment to go down there and like work it out, you know, so. So anyway, we're, getting on, we're getting on the plane to fly home and we were flying Southwest and we were in that dreaded group C in Southwest. Come on, where y'all at? And you get there and all that's left is middle seats, right? And so we end up, the three of us kind of, kind of spread out and it's, it's beautiful weather in Orlando. We're flying, you know, I guess hour and a half, whatever it might be to Birmingham. 
we're flying, um, you know, in, into the sunset. It's kind of this, you know, beautiful moment, super peaceful, kind of we're in the things above. And as we start coming into Birmingham, the pilot's like, hey, we're gonna, there's a storm, you know, in Birmingham. We're gonna, we're gonna, you just, you just never wanna hear this. He goes, we're gonna try to land in Birmingham. <laughs> like, what? Is that an option? Like, put, you know, where are we gonna put the, if not Birmingham, where? You know, do we have enough fuel, whatever? So anyway, so true, true story. We start coming down and y'all, every, you know how everybody gets tense on a plane? Now, now we're in a, like, it goes from peaceful sunset to like, we're all gonna die, you know? And everyone's holding hands. <laughs> Instantly, you're friends with everybody, you know, and, and we're all in this together, you know, praying for each other. Anyway, so we start, we come down, and, and I'd never had this happen before. Maybe you have before. Like, it was really bad. I think it was what they call wind shear. And so the pilot's literally trying to, he's trying to put that thing down, but we, we, we can't get down. And so he, like, right before we get to the ground, he, like, it just hits it. And it's like top gun. It's, like, straight back up. You know, he's like, you know, the pilot comes on. He's like, wow, that was close. You know, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is close. What's wrong? You don't, if you feel it, don't say that, you know, if you're a pilot. So anyway, and, and then all of a sudden, this is horrible. I, I don't want to go in detail, but people start getting sick. I mean, those bags are there for a reason. And like, cause it's really, really bumpy. And then we try one more time. He doesn't even get that close to the ground. He's like, hey, we're going to circle for a little bit and we're going to try one more time. And if not, we're going to go land somewhere, you know, really remote. Like, I don't, I, mean, I don't know. Like, are we, are, you know, where are we where are we gonna, maybe to Oxford. I don't, I don't know where we're going to go. <laughs> close to the airport. And so, and so he, he, he ends, up fly, ends up flying around. And then finally, y'all, we put that thing down and it, we can't, he can't, he was determined. He came through that storm. I, he must live in Birmingham. He was ready to get home. He put that thing on the ground. Y'all know how it was. If we hit the ground, everybody's clapping, crying, hugging. You know, it was an amazing moment. And I think about that kind of tug of war moment. It's really very similar a lot of times to our Christian life. Like there's this, this tug of war between these, these things above, which we know is where life and hope and freedom and all those things live and then this this chaos down below and for whatever reason we're still trying to force ourselves down into it and God's word shows us tonight that 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 tug of war and what I love about uh, the Colossians text is that tug of war doesn't have to be our reality that there actually is a better way the first two verses we read say to us you know set your heart and your minds on Christ but but then we get this prescription that makes all of this practical which I'm so grateful for God's word in chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 Paul says so set your hearts on things above set your minds on things above and here's the prescription for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. And for me, this has been a massive revelation in my life. And what I love right here, is, and I've missed it for so long, is that God's better way for us to live than that tug of war of up and down and the chaos and how <laughs> the, the sickness that even comes from living that kind of life and the chaos and how murky and muddled it can make us feel and live that the answer is his better way is a gospel way. And in those two verses, Paul is inviting us to participate in something that too often we think was a one-time decision. Like I got saved at one point and I experienced the gospel and I raised my hand and I, in my case, I walked down an aisle and I surrendered to God and, it, and I signed up to be in that case, at a Baptist church, a member of the church that night and I went through this whole process. And for whatever reason, sometimes we can think that that's a distant memory and what Paul's saying is no, 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 no. If you're gonna make it in the chaos and craziness of this world, then the gospel is not something you experience once. It's something you get saved one time, but you experience the gospel every single day. And that the only way we're gonna make it in this world is to keep Jesus at the center. And if we do, we're able to live an up there life in a down here reality. And we do that by living in the gospel. Four things he says right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share these and we're gonna go into an encounter flow tonight, which I'll share more about. I'm so excited because really the encounter flow tonight is gonna be a way for us to experience the very thing we're talking about from God's word here tonight. He says these four things. He says, we died with Christ, we are hidden in Christ, we live with Christ, and we will appear with Christ. The first one, write this down. We died with Christ. Y'all, we must never forget that before Jesus, we were dead in our sins. Come on, does anybody know a sinner? Like, do anybody know anybody that sins? I mean, I know people that sin. Some of them live in my house. All right, this isn't talking about them. All the thems in our life, let's be really clear. I, we, <laughs> you, we were dead in sins. I know a lot of sinners, I'm a sinner. Ephesians 2, 1 says, as for you, everybody say you. <laughs> you were dead in your transgressions and sins. We were dead because we were sinners. We sinned and we fell short. The consequence was, consequence was death. We are, I earned my punishment. I deserved everything. I don't know about y'all. I deserved everything that came with the sin that I participated in. I deserved all of it. 
And there was no hope, no way out. I, I grew up in the country and every once in a while there would be like a snake. Um, my, my grandfather had a farm, a big farm and there would often, he had these hay barns and there would be these rat snakes uh, that, would, that would, I guess, go in there because it was warm or whatever in the winter and we'd, we'd find them. And he was, he was an epic with a garden hoe. He would take that garden hoe, y'all, with one swipe, that head of that snake would come off. And I love it because I hate snakes. It's a fascinating thing, though, if you've ever done that. I mean, it's pretty violent, but afterwards, that thing keeps moving usually till sunset. That's honestly a great picture of us. We were dead. We may be still moving, but we were already dead. There was no hope until our life collided with a perfect and sinless Savior who went to a cross and died the most brutal death that's ever been created by mankind a death he didn't deserve to pay my punishment. I'm talking about the gospel tonight. A gospel that we can just, just raise a hand for, a gospel we can be invited to every single day to participate. For me, I was a middle school student. I, mean, I remember growing up and I, I was around church, but I never connected with God. I felt so alone. I was so insecure. I tried to fit in with everybody and whatever they were doing, I was doing. If they were wearing it, I was wearing it. Come on, y'all remember those Reebok pump shoes? You pump them up, and apparently you can, t- you can dunk a basketball. We, we couldn't afford those, but I had some Jordash pumps. I mean, they were from Walmart, right? Come on, somebody. And I, I thought I was, I was, if they were wearing it, I was wearing it. If their hair was cut that way, I, my hair was cut. I had no idea who I really was. I was lost. I was listless, listless like in a storm being blown around. And then somewhere around 14, 15 years old, I changed all of that insecurity, and I just went after like the rebellion side. I'm like, well, if I don't know who I am, if I, I can't be all of them, I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do. Maybe that was your story. Some part of that was your story. And I did for a couple years what I wanted to do. I lied to my parents. I went to the party. If, they were, if, they were, if it was av- available to drink, I was drinking it. In the middle of all that, I was more and more miserable. Come on, anybody remember pre-Jesus? Miserable yeah. moments yeah. that you may have said were fun were always followed by shame yeah. and confusion and hurt and just this literally hopeless feeling of I'm lost in that. But when I was 17 years old, I went to church and I wish I would up here with a testimony that I went to church for Jesus, but my first yes to church was because of a girl. (laughs) And I went to meet this girl and I met Jesus. And on the way home one night from from that service, that youth group service, it was called TNT, this youth group on Thursday night in Ashland, Alabama at First Baptist Church. Come on, Lindsay, where you at? We grew up in the same youth group. TNT, was, it was called TNT because it was Thursday night thing. That was actually what the youth group was called. And we were coming home that, I was coming home that night and I pulled over on the side of the road. Y'all, I met Jesus and my life changed forever. I've never been the same. Well, do you might remember meeting Jesus and experiencing his power. And listen, we never glorify our sin. We should spend no time glorifying the past and our sin, but we should never stop glorifying our savior the God who saved us, the God who redeemed us. Come on, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Come on, can we give God some praise tonight? We have been crucified with Christ. We no longer live. And now, come on, we got a new life, a new life. Let it never become old news. The good news should never become old news been crucified with Christ. And Paul says, if you're gonna make it in this world, in the craziness and confusion and chaos, don't ever forget the first anchor of the gospel of Jesus, that you were dead, you died, but you didn't get lost in that death, you died with Christ. Because he died and because he was resurrected, now you can live a crucified, resurrected life. And on things above is a daily pursuit, just like we would put on the armor of God every single day. Every single day, come on, I have been crucified with Christ. Let us never forget the power of what he's done inside of us. There was no hope and he made a way. The second part of that text says that we are now hidden in Christ. And I love, I love this truth that our life is now hidden with Christ in God. And this truth is incredible, especially in the world we live in because the world we live in right now, especially just does not feel safe. I think there's a kind of a universal feeling somewhat of vulnerability because there's just so much, so many unexpected things. I don't know about you today, but in the middle of the day today, my phone started beeping like crazy. And it's scary, anybody else get scared to death today? Jill and I were on a short walk and her phone's going off. I'm going off, I'm like, oh my, what is happening? And apparently it's happening all over the, the, the galaxy. I don't, know, I don't even know how they do that. I mean, there's just so many things that are new in our world, so many things that are happening, especially, let's be honest, post COVID, this is a, a different world than pre COVID. And politics and economy and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and just social tension and, and the future. And now, you know, 
there's global conflict. There's so, so many different things happening. You know, there's this kind of reaction in the world in the middle of all of that. People are like looking for a safe space. In fact, that's kind of become this kind of big deal safe space. And listen, I'll, there's a lot of foolish ways that ends up being, being used and like lived out. But by the way, but let's always recognize that the world, because they don't know Jesus, will always try to fix the right problem with the wrong solution. And that's what we see happening. The word of God tells us this, so there's only one true safe space and y'all, we're not gonna find it down here, it's up there. That in Christ, check this out, Proverbs 18, 10, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower and the righteous run to it and there is safety. I said the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus, is, that's the strong tower. And the righteous every single day, not a one-time situation. We're not, okay, I'm, I've made that decision, now I'm gonna live this thing out. No, every single day I'm running to Jesus. If he's a fortified tower, that's exactly what I need in the world we're living in. And that word safe in the original language, it means an inaccessibly high place. Come on, somebody, on things above. Written right into God's word. If you want it every single day, you can live a life in a, a down here reality with an up there life. I am going to run to Jesus and I'm not gonna kind of sit next to him or tag him on the shoulder. I'm gonna jump fully into being hidden in Christ, the fortified tower. And I'm gonna stay, I don't know about you, I wanna stay in that fortress. I don't wanna live one day outside of that fortress. You know, I've shared this many times, but Jill and I have four boys. Y'all pray for Jill. She is just, un she's just, just Jill in Jesus' name, bless her. There's so much testosterone and chaos in our house. And we live in an older home. Our home is uh, roughly about 100 years old. It's like a, a craftsman bungalow. And, and it's short on space, but it's large on character. Come on, somebody, all right? So it's an older home. We love it. And so a lot of things we do are outside. Like, we don't really have enough room for all that energy to be inside. Our house literally would explode. And so we have spent a lot of time. In fact, it's been like a pursuit of mine to craft the perfect backyard for four boys. And I do love my kids, but it's really so Jill and I can survive. Because literally, we'll, sometimes we'll drink coffee and we'll look out our back. We have this big back you know, kind of glass. And we'll look out in the backyard and it's like a boy zoo. We're like watching them out there do all these crazy things. You know, like one minute they're fighting, next minute they're high-fiving. And it's just chaos always. So we got like a trampoline, a little basketball, like a little, short, little area they can shoot basketball. We got, we got a, and up top in our yard, we, we have a, a tree house, which we call Fortress Pettis, right? You know, because it's, it's in our backyard. And my boys love, one of the games they love to play is Nerf Battle. And, and we actually, you know, we're not really for violence, but we think Nerf guns are an appropriate way to take out some of that. And, you know, it's like, if you want to settle something, go grab a Nerf gun. In fact, this is a wall in our upstairs. They have to choose. That's actually, that's, that's a real picture. And so, and uh, uh, Johnny Walker, you know, you like that right there. I know. So anyway, so... Um, so, so they grab a gun, they go outside and they handle it. And, and they like to run all over the yard. But I'm always saying, come on, the high ground is the best ground. I'm always saying, get up in the tree house. But in our tree house, we have this little zip line coming out of our tree house, which I never should have built because it's only about 20 feet and they end up hitting the tree that they go into. But anyway, it's also kind of fun to watch. But anyway, so they love, they love to not stay in the fortress. They love to come down on that zip line and like try to shoot people as they're coming down because they want to look cool. And I'm always like, don't do that because once you're down here, it's chaos. When you got the high ground, you stay in the high ground. When you stay in the fortress, hey, can I tell you something? God has called us to use his name as a fortified tower, to use his life as a hiding place, a fortress where the enemy cannot touch us. So let's not live one single day outside of fortress Christ. His name is a fortified tower. And I'm gonna run to it every single day. Colossians 2, 6. And seven says, so then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, here it is, everybody, continue every single day to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, overflowing with thankfulness. And here's just, I mean, uh, this is how I pray it out every single day. This is a, in the craziness of the world, and just honestly, it's, it's not even about that world, it's about the world I'm living in. It's, it's raising a family and doing things I've never done. I've never raised a teenager. I've never faced some of the leadership things that are in front of me. And just a daily rhythm, I don't wanna take one step without being hidden in Christ. If, it's a, if he's said, you're, I'm available for you as a fortified tower. So literally, I'm praying every single day, God, you are a son and a shield. God, you go before me and you are my rear guard. I am hiding myself in you today, taking on the full armor of God and standing firm in the center, Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus and the work of Jesus in my life. Come on, all things above, write it down. I am hidden in fortress Christ. Come on, write that down. That's our, that's our promise. That we die with Christ, we are hidden with Christ. And number three, we live with Christ. When we live with Christ, this is such a beautiful promise. This is where we 
this is, this is our daily rhythm here. When, we, when we're living with Christ, his life becomes our life and his mission becomes our mission. And, and, and there's a lot of words we would use for less, this kind of idea. A lot of times in church, we'll say things like sanctification or discipleship you know, or, or holiness. And I don't know about you, but sometimes those words can be super intimidating. Like I'm taking on the life of Christ, that's sanctification. It almost feels like you know, it's just unachievable. And so I'm so grateful for, for Paul, the way he writes in Colossians in chapter three, he tells us that when we take on his life, there's really two aspects of it. He uses really great language in verses five through nine. He says, first of all, to take on the life of Christ means to put to death or to rid yourselves or to take off your sinful nature. And I love that that's more casual like street language, that part of our daily rhythm is every single day now because we've, we have died to death. By the way, death is now behind us, but now we are still gonna be putting to death the things that try to pop up. Y'all remember Chuck E. Cheese? Anybody remember Chuck E. Cheese? Back in the day, it was called Showbiz Pizza, right? And it was like the spot, man. It was like, if you had a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz, you were rich. That's what it felt like for me growing up. And, and now it's like where you go buy drugs, right? But anyway, so, um, so, so, uh, so, so if my kids ever were like, we're going to Chuck E. Cheese, I'm like, oh no, you're not going to Chuck E. Cheese. You're going to the Trustville PlayStation. That's where you're going. Anyway, so, um, so, so y'all remember that game, the Whack-A-Mole? Yeah, that was like on the commercial, that was like the game. It's like you're hitting, and it keep, that's a lot of what our Christian life's gonna look like, but it's not out of a place of defeat, it's out of a place of victory. I'm actually, I get to put to death that sin, that temptation, that lust, that anger. When it pops its head up, and it will, while we're living on this earth, none of us are ever gonna be perfect, right? And when it pops its head up, but now I have the power and the authority to whack that sin, to knock it back down with the power and authority of Jesus. I can take that off, but then he goes on to say, we don't just take it off. In verses 12 through 17, he says, we can also put on, I love it even uses this kind of the metaphor of putting on clothes, that we put on our new nature and that's not gonna happen one, in one day. It's a continual pursuit. It's living in the gospel. Every single day, killing my sinful nature. Every single day, taking on the clothes of Christ. And, and we go read it in Colossians 3. It's his nature, it's his compassion and his love. And it says we can overflow with gratitude and thankfulness. When it's fun, when you get new clothes, right? The first time you put on a new fit, you put on those new clothes. What did Jesus say? There's an, there's an eternal closet for us to continue to put on the clothes of Christ in every area of our life. So we're not who we wanna be, but come on somebody, as PC says, but thank God we're not who we used to be. We're on the journey, we're in the process. And the devil tries to get us confused down here. We're like, no, no, my mind and my heart on things above. I'm on a journey of taking off and putting on, and not, it's not gonna be by my power. In fact, Ze Zechariah says, not by my, my might or my power, but by the Spirit of God. It's never about doing or earning, it's letting God do what he wants to do in our lives. Because the reality is we have died with Christ, and we are hidden in Christ. And we are called to live with Christ. His life becomes our life, and his mission becomes our mission. I love the, the, the language of, of um, 2 Corinthians 5, he says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We put on those new clothes. We become his ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And here's our job as Christians. In fact, we were first called Christians, the book of Acts says in Antioch. You know why we were called Christian? They didn't know what to call this group of people that were not really Jewish, but they weren't, they weren't obviously they were, they, were, they were pursuing a faith that was different than the Roman Empire, so they weren't Jewish or Gentile or Roman. They were just this new thing, and there was all these different ways they tried to frame them. And at some point, someone said, well, they're Christians, which literally means little Christ. And they were doing it, as you probably have heard, maybe they were doing it derogatory. They were like, oh, look at those little people like trying to be like Jesus. And I love the early Christians, y'all. They were radical. They were like, oh yeah, now we got a name. We are little Christ. We put on his clothes, we take on his nature and we're on his mission and now we just get to show the world, look, I'm with him. It's never been about me, I'm with him. I died to myself, I've been resurrected, I'm hidden in him, I have the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit living inside of me, changing me to make me more, more like Jesus. And evangelism, it takes intentionality but it doesn't take effort. We just get to show the world who we are in Christ. Here's, here's Jesus, I'm an, it's just like an ambassador from the US to any other nation. They in themselves don't have authority, they carry authority. Wherever they go, and literally the building that they serve in, it's sovereign US territory. And when they step into a meeting, they're not doing it as one man or one woman into a meeting, they're doing it on behalf of the, what, the roughly 300 million of us saying, as America we say this. That's an ambassador, that's what we're called to be that his life becomes our life. Every single day, God, use me on your mission. God, make me more like you so I can be an ambassador. I promise you this, I know in my life, 
the more I focus on that, the less I'm worried about what's happening down here. I ain't got any time for this. I'm becoming more like Jesus and every day is an opportunity to show others the power of what God has done in me. Come on tonight, we're re-centered on things above. I live with Christ. His life is my life. His mission is my mission. And then finally, God's word says, and we're gonna go into our time of encounter. It says in verse four, we know when Christ who is your life appears then you will also appear with him in glory. And write it down, we will appear with Christ. And this is, you know, the ultimate promise of the gospel. And we set our hearts and minds on things above because eternity with Christ, it actually it already is our home. Philippians 3.20 says, we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we eagerly, throughout this life, we eagerly await for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak and mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. What a beautiful promise that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in this world, but we're, we're aliens, we're travelers, we're just passing through. That's the reality of the gospel that we get to live in every single day is no matter what we're facing, come on, really at the end of the day, the, enemy, the enemy's power is broken. And so there's nothing, that's what Paul says, to live as Christ, to die as gain. There's nothing left that the enemy has unless we give it to him because that promise is our promise. And I love that Paul's writing to the Philippians because they, they were considered Roman citizens, this, this audience, but they had never physically been to Rome, but yet because they were Roman citizens, they carried all the authority of Rome with them. They had never been there, but they had the authority. And we haven't been to eternity with Jesus, but we already have the authority. And that promise can seed itself into our heart on things above. I will spend eternity with Christ. There's nothing left for me to fear. There's no, there's nothing down here that can ever impact that promise and that truth that I was now remade, reborn to live there in eternity in a new earth with Jesus forever. So we're living in the murkiness and chaos of this world, but God's word tonight gives us handles to live. And I pray that tonight, I mean, I think Romans 12 too is a beautiful text to finish with in the message. I love the way that it's written. I pray that tonight as we read God's word and as we're about to experience his presence, that we just don't become so well adjusted to our culture that we fit into it without even thinking. Instead, we fix our attention on God. And when we do, we are changed, not just, one, not just in the past, not just one day when it happened, but we are changed every single day from the inside out. We readily recognize what he wants from us and we quickly respond to it. Unlike culture around us, always dragging it, us down to its level of immaturity. Come on, somebody, God brings out the best in us and develops well-formed maturity. We're just talking about the gospel. I know it's a simple message. It's an invitation to experience the power of God. For me, uh, just thinking through this has been really, honestly, very powerful for me. And, and, and I, I know we're not like, you know, symbols are a symbol for us and there, there's not a deeper meaning, but they're, they're a good reminder. When we look at a cross, we remember what Jesus did for us. Can I just give you even a new thought around the cross? It's got four points on it. Whenever I see a cross now, what I'm thinking at the bottom of this cross, I die with Christ. Right here on, the, on, on this side, I, I'm hidden in Christ. Hey, everybody, I'm gonna live with Christ. And one day I'm gonna appear with him. And when I see that, I remind myself and I fix my attention on the promise of God that wasn't just a one-time thing, it's an everyday opportunity for us. That we would die, that we'd be hidden, that we would live because we will appear. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pray for us. And we got about 15, 20 minutes, not, not a lot of time. And hey, the, the main thing here is just don't leave because I believe God, the best work God wants to do tonight is in these next 12 to 15 minutes. We're gonna make available, if you've been around Highlands, you've experienced this. Um, maybe if you haven't, this will be the first time. It's a powerful moment. The team's gonna come behind me. They're gonna lead worship for a few moments and we'll have a chance just if you want, if that's what this moment needs to look for, like for you, stay right there where you are and just keep it vertical, not looking around, but just your attention fixed on Jesus and worship for these next few moments and allow him to minister to you. There's also gonna be a prayer team down front and that'll be available for you to step out and just to receive prayer for any area of your life. Maybe that, that area of being hidden in Christ, you've felt very vulnerable, you've been You've kind of been living outside of that protection and tonight you just need someone to agree with you or fight for you in prayer and we would love to do that tonight. 
really powerful opportunity to participate in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have communion available tonight at stations. It'll be self-serve, but they'll have, you'll have the ability to take the juice, which represents his, his blood, and to take that bread, which represents his body, and to participate in that tonight as a reminder of the gospel work of Jesus Christ happening in your life. And then we have these crosses at every location. And these are so powerful for me. Some of the great moments in my own discipleship journey have been just taking, uh, walking up to a cross in a room like this, and just taking the note card that is there and writing down maybe a sin or a situation or a circumstance or just an obstacle that's been in your way and pinning it to the cross as a symbol. I am finished with this once and for all and leaving it right there. All of that's gonna be available for the next 12 minutes and you have the freedom at any point to participate in any of that. This is the moment for you to respond to what God is doing. If you would stand where you are at every location, I wanna pray for us. And then we're gonna go into that moment. We're just praying that we would experience the touch of God tonight in such a powerful way. God, we love you. We're so grateful for who you are, for what you've done among us tonight, for the power of your word. And God, I pray for these next few moments as your presence is so evidently here that we would all, as those who have been raised with you, experience your life in these moments. God, I pray that we would just simply respond and step out maybe in worship or in prayer or at the cross or communion as a symbol of our dedication to you that we're always gonna pursue you and we're asking you to meet us right where we are tonight. God, I pray for those tonight who have been living that kind of confused, chaotic life that tonight would be recentering. For others, God, who are gonna come forward and pray for a friend or family member, I pray for a spirit of faith in this house tonight. God, I pray for those who are sick, they would come forth and receive healing in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for these crosses to be filled with things that we're leaving behind, that old sinful nature that we're just done with and we're applying the power of the Holy Spirit to tonight. God, you know what each of us needs and so we are here to experience you, so do what only you can speak to us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.